In this video, we're going to see how to create a vignette with Photoshop Elements. A vignette is a technique that darkens the edges of a photo to draw the viewer's attention more towards the inside and the subject of the photo. An example is if we apply a vignette to this photo, here's what it would look like. We're also going to see how to create a custom vignette. Hi, my name is Rick Peterson from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. Let's go over to Elements and get started. I'm using Photoshop Elements 13 for this video, and if you have Photoshop Elements 11 or newer, you can try the vignette technique that's built right into those versions, and I'll quickly show you how to do that. First, we need to go to Guided Edit, and you can do that by clicking on Guided at the top of your window. Now we're in Guided Edit mode. I'm going to close this up and notice that there's only a couple of tools over on the left of your window now as opposed to when you're in expert or full edit and I'm gonna change this view from after only if you click on that you see some other choices I'm gonna choose before and after horizontal that'll let us see a before and after side by side now over in that right panel, you'll see these different categories, and the one that we want is camera effects. So click on the arrow next to that, and you can see all the different effects that we can apply from that category. Down near the bottom is vignette effect, so I'll click on that. Now our panel changes to instructions for applying a vignette effect. At the top, there's a thumbnail of a golden retriever, and underneath it, it says after. Roll over to see before. So if I put my cursor over the top of the thumbnail, it shows what the photo looked like before the vignette was applied. And then as soon as I take it off of the thumbnail, it goes back to the after the vignette was applied look. Step one says select a vignette. Well, there's also these instructions down here. It says Click on black or white to add vignette to your image. This will highlight the subject in your image. And there's this intensity slider, which is grayed out right now because we haven't applied the effect yet. I'm going to choose black. All you do is click on the one you want. And now if you look over in the active image area, the photo on the right has the vignette applied to it. You can see how it's a little darker over on the edges. and. Typically in this technique, you want that to be very subtle. Now that intensity slider is no longer grayed out, so if I slide it over towards the left, it's not quite as dark, and if you slide it over towards the right, it gets darker. I think for this photo, I'm going to leave it all the way, all the way over to the right. And step two is, says refine shape, and it tells you that it's an optional step and it says click to access sliders to make changes to the applied effect. So let's click on it and we get this dialog box which gives us some options we can choose from. There's feather and roundness so you can just play around with those and see if you like what they do and if they do just click OK. If you don't click cancel and it'll stay just the way it is here and basically that's it. We're done with the guided edit for adding a vignette effect. We could just click done at this point. To get back to expert mode, you would click on expert up here. I received this email from Ann and she wanted to create vignettes, but she didn't necessarily like the one that she was getting in guided edit. So she was wondering how she could do a custom vignette. And uh, so I'll show you how to do that. This will also work if you have an older version of Elements. If you have Photoshop Elements 10 or older, you can also use this technique. I'm going to uh, use this photo to show you that technique. The first thing we want to do is create a new layer. Go over to the Layers panel and click on the Create a New Layer icon, the one that looks like a sheet of paper with a folded over corner and that adds a new layer above the background layer and it's named layer one by default. We can tell that it's a transparent layer first of all because there was no changes that occurred in the active image area. Also in the layers panel we can see that layer one is filled with that gray and white checkerboard pattern which indicates that it's just a transparent layer so 
we can see right through it to the background layer below. In step two, we're going to fill that new layer with black. To do that, you can go up to the Edit menu and choose Fill Layer by clicking on it, and the Fill Layer dialog box appears. And then from the Use field, click on that and choose Black by clicking on it, and then click OK. Now we can no longer see the hummingbird in the active image area because layer one is completely black and it's on top of the background layer, so it's covering it up. The next step is we're going to turn the visibility off for the new layer, and we can do that by clicking on its eye in the Layers panel. As soon as I do, we can see the hummingbird again because we're hiding that black layer. The reason that I wanted to be able to see the hummingbird is because I want to draw a selection around it. I want to use the elliptical marquee tool to draw a round selection. I'll just click on that and if you go up there and you see the rectangular marquee tool instead, you can just click on that and then go down to the uh, tool options. Click on uh, elliptical marquee tool down there to make it active and make sure that feather is set to zero. Click and drag on your photo. Um, I'm going to start in the upper left and click and drag diagonally down to the lower right of my photo. When I let go, I can see the selection that that made indicated by those marching ants. This one wing up here is outside of my selection, so I'm going to move my cursor inside of the uh, round selection and click and drag to move it a bit so that that wing is included inside of the selection. You can move a selection uh, by clicking and dragging inside of the selection with any of these select tools. But for instance, if I would try to do it with the, um, I don't know, the red eye removal tool, it doesn't work. So it needs to be a selection tool. You get this error dialog box. If uh, you need to further adjust your selection, you don't have to start over. You can go up to the Select menu and choose Transform Selection by clicking on it. You get this bounding box around your selection with eight adjustment handles. And you can use those handles to resize your selection. So, for instance, if I wanted the bottom of my selection to come down further, I could click and drag on this center bottom handle and just drag down and then when you let go the selection goes to the point where you let go. To make it smaller you click and drag up. You can do that on any of these center handles. I'm gonna just go with that so I'll click the uh, green check mark to get rid of my bounding box and accept my changes. The next thing I want to do is invert my selection. So right now the hummingbird is um, selected, but I want to have everything except for the hummingbird selected. To do that, I can go up to the Select menu and choose Inverse, or I could use the keyboard shortcut Shift-Command-I on a Mac, or it'd be Shift-Control-I on a PC. So I'll just click on that and now you can see that everything but the hummingbird is selected because now I have marching ants around the outside of my uh, photo also. So at this point I'm going to click on that eye again for layer 1 to turn the visibility back on for layer 1. It's still completely black but I'm going to add a layer mask and the layer mask is going to be based on the selection. So you'll see what, what I mean when I click on it. You can see where I had my selection, we can now see the hummingbird, and if you look at the layer mask over in the layers panel, there's a black round area where the selection was. But this doesn't really give us a vignette. The reason for that is because the edges of the circle are sharp and hard, so we need to soften up those edges a bit. And we can do that by adding a Gaussian blur. So I'll go up to the filter menu and choose blur and Gaussian blur. And that brings up the Gaussian Blur dialog box. I always ignore this preview window inside the dialog box. I just make sure preview is checked and that way I can see what's happening right out here in the active image area. 
So I'm just going to start dragging this uh, radius slider over towards the right. And the further I drag it, the more blurry the, the edges of that round selection I made get. We get something similar to what we did before in guided edit mode. And then when you're happy, you just click OK. But what's nice here is we have this layer mask now, so I don't know if I wanted to make sure that I could see that the hummingbird was a little brighter. I could just grab my brush tool, and if I look at my layer mask, I see the part that's over the hummingbird is black. So I'll make sure my foreground color is black. I'm going to size my brush down a little bit by using the left bracket key on my keyboard. And I also want to make sure I have a soft-edged brush. That's a hard-edged brush, but if you scroll through your brushes, notice these all have hard edges. Eventually you'll get down to the softer edged brushes and just double click on one of those and then put your cursor over in the active image area and use the bracket keys. Now I'm using the right bracket key to make it bigger and it's the left bracket key to make it smaller. I'll just paint over the hummingbird a little bit to make sure that that's all nice and bright. And that's basically all there is to it. I could make my brush really big and then kind of bring it in towards the corners and just click and that will fade it out more towards the corners of the photo also. The other thing you can do is lower the opacity for layer one. In the layers panel just click and drag on the word opacity. Click and drag over towards the left to make it lighter and over to the right to make it darker. And that's all there is to it. But Anna in her email wanted to make more of a custom vignette, so I'm going to throw away layer one. I can show you how to do that. So we start out the same, create a new layer, and fill it with black. It's at black already, so I'll just click OK. Turn off the visibility for layer one. This time I'm going to grab the lasso tool to make my selection. And I'm just going to kind of follow the, roughly I'm going to follow the outline of the hummingbird. Like that. And now I'll turn the visibility back on. I need to invert my selection, so I'll use the keyboard shortcut Shift-Command-I on a Mac, or it'd be Shift-Control-I on a PC, and then add a layer mask by clicking on the Add Layer Mask icon. And now I need to blur the edges of the layer mask, so I'll go up to the Filter menu, choose Blur, Gaussian Blur, and it defaults to what uh, we applied to the last one, so I'm going to bring the slider all the way over to the left and then just kind of start dragging it towards the right, see how it progresses. So maybe something like that would be good, however you want to do it. But we'll call that good and click OK. You can also try lowering the opacity if you want. And that pretty much wraps it up. That's all there is. That's how you can create a custom vignette on your own in Photoshop Elements. Or if you have Photoshop Elements 11 or newer, you can try using the guided edit for creating a vignette with those versions. I hope you found this helpful. Until next time, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com saying take care.